Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Anna. And we're two sisters who love handcrafting and figuring things out. All right, we're starting off kind of laughing because we just started a video, I don't know, 10 minutes ago. And then I, we realized there wasn't the, t the time, what, little, what do you call it? A cron, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't showing and, and we double checked and we were on time lapse instead of video. So here we go. <laughs> Welcome. That's, that's why we're, we're laughing a little bit. Welcome to episode 19. We are coming to you on January 28th, Saturday from sunny California. Mm -hmm. We have had these sort of dreamy light fog mornings and sunny afternoons that's and it's making everybody so happy. Yeah. It's that time when it's beautiful sun, but like we have crisp air and you know, it's still low sixties, high fifties, low sixties during the day. So it's really, really great to get outside. Really nice. Mm -hmm. so, good. Awesome. So in this episode, we're going to do a little chit chat about things we've done the last couple of weeks. We're going to share what we're wearing. Anna has an FO that we're going to get to see. I haven't mm -hmm. seen it yet myself. We have some whips that we're going to share. Um, we're going to talk about what I've been doing, exploring some hexagon things, a couple shared supplies, and then we'll end with our thumbs up. And, and as always, thank you so much for your comments. In response to our last video, we received some really great recommendations of some sources of places to look to learn more about samplers and some recommendations for some scissors with sharp, thin blades. I was mentioning in our in the previous video that I'm using the pin stitch more and having a hard time getting close enough to the fabric to snip mm -hmm. that thread. So uh, Kohanas, of course, were recommended, but also a, um, I feel like I'm the wire cutter, like the budget. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For less than twenty dollars, there's a um, sharp, small pair of OmniGrid scissors. They're called four-inch needle worker scissors, or something like that. So I thought that was an interesting recommendation for mm -hmm. something. I, hey, we should look. I wonder if Wirecutter has done anything on embroidery scissors. I and never and, we and if not, them. we should like. Hey, have you thought about embroidery scissors? Because they are something like you really need a good pair. Yeah, you want working. them to be really sharp. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what wire cutter is, it's kind of like the modern day consumer reports mm -hmm. where they investigate something, test something, and then give their recommendations in different prices. I know. Ranges. Usually whenever I buy something, I'm like wire cutter first and then to see what it is. Yeah. Um, another fun thing we did over the last couple of weeks is Anna and I participated in our very first 24 hours of cross stitch marathon. And that's hosted by Jen Lee of Quirks and Stitches and her mom. And again, I, I don't quite remember what her mom's name is. It's so funny. I think of her as, oh, that's Jen's mom. And I think her name might be Cindy, but I'll double check and I'll, and I'll put it down here. And I think they're on either their 17th or 19th um, time. They do it four times a year. So this is our first time. And the goal is, can you stitch 24 hours within a weekend uh, time frame? And we both kind of started on Friday and we just did a little stitching independently for mm -hmm. that. And then on Saturday, I went over to Anna's house and we stitched all day. And then on Sunday, Anna came over to my house and we stitched all day and it was um, so fun. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. I don't know, what, well, I think it was so fun because we were so free. It was easy breezy. We're just stitching all weekend. Mm -hmm. We've been to each other's houses so many times, but it just felt, spe it felt special, special for you to come over in the morning and stay all day. <laughs> we had like our take a walk spread coffee, out, all kinds lunch. of beverages. Yeah. We sent our husbands out when it was our turn to get, go get us a lunch. And then um, our husband, her, your husband came over for dinner mm -hmm. that night and yeah. mine did for them. And on Sunday, we had a little bit of a football party too, because we're in the football playoffs right here. So mm -hmm. you, you, kept you kept stitching through that I did too. keep stitching through that. So. Okay. I just going to be honest. I'm like, oh, 
24 hours, that's gonna be no problem over three days. I'm gonna totally be able to do that. I'm gonna get over 24 hours. And no, 24 it's hours so many is hours. a really long time. We both had our phones going and we had a stopwatch on our phone. And so we'd start and stop it, you know, when we were stitching and we're really good. We'd be like, so if we're gonna talk, talk, we'd be like, I stopped my cron, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I made it to 19 hours and 56 minutes. Not and Anna. 16 hours and something. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's funny. I'm a super um, competitive person. So I thought it was going to be like, I got to get my 24. And I'm like, I thought you were too. Yeah. I was really surprised myself. I think just because it was so much fun and it was just fun watching the time go by. <laughs> and in the end, I really didn't care if I got 24 or not. I, I think to get 24 without like pushing yourself because I, I never got tired of cross stitching or felt like my eyes were tired. I think you would really need the three days. Yes. Yes. Um, to do more on that Friday. We just did a little bit on Friday. And I am not as competitive a person, <laughs> but it did feel good to me to set aside 24 hours mm -hmm. of like, I'm not going to worry about housework or schoolwork or anything. So I was thinking 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Saturday and Sunday mm -hmm. to just kind of free my schedule, free my mind and uh, just relax yeah. and just cross stitching. I like that as another perspective on the on what the 24 hours might mean for that. So I'm going to definitely participate in another one. I don't know if I'll do all four in a year, but... I think I'd like to try at least to get to do it. I would do it again in a second. Yes. Mm -hmm. So really fun. Mm -hmm. right, we're going to talk about what we did this okay. morning, so bright and early at 7 a.m. That's right. We were up at 7 a.m. <laughs> uh, listening to a webinar that was hosted by, I want to get the name correct, the Delaware Gene Genealogical Society. And the guest speaker was Cindy Steinhoff. And the title of her presentation was Wrought with a Careful Hand, Delaware Schoolgirl Samplers. So she was part of a big project to collect as many samplers from Delaware, identify them, catalog them. And she described that prog process and that project. And then she showed us some and it was so nice that we could really good view because the photos were, we were on zoom and the photos were, were clear enough to really see. And she even showed us some close ups of some mm -hmm. points that she made. And it, I just, I know it's just the tip of the iceberg and I just learned so much and I'm ready to learn more. Yeah. She was just so knowledgeable. And, um, I, she mentioned that they cataloged everything with high resolution photos in a database. So I'll be curious to go back. She gave us some resources to see if that database is open to the public. Cause that would be great to go in and explore this a little bit more, but it was great. She'd show us a sampler and then she would zoom into different parts. She wanted to talk about and she had detailed photos where you could really see the stitching and she was talking about them. And since it was in connection with the Genealogical Society, she was emphasizing how can you find out about the stitcher and her family and how she, that fits into genealogy and use it as a genealogical record. Uh, so I thought that was a really interesting piece to it. Right. I, I did not real. I know people have fun when they find a sampler or buy a sampler to find out about the stitcher. I did not know the role that samplers played in the world of genealogy as a whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was neat. Yeah. And even the first one she showed was just had a very simple border. And then it was just rows of so-and-so married, so-and-so born this, died this. And it was really just like what you might put in your family Bible, um, just a record um, for that. So I thought that was really, yeah, that cool one, that well. one was giving me ideas. Mm -hmm. Another a little tidbit that I, I found fascinating was so often there's a little extra note on the back of the mm. sampler that's been mm -hmm. taped or glued to the back and those are nicknamed granny notes and mm -hmm. she was just saying that they often have a little bit of extra something mm -hmm. that helps place the family in genealogical trees like who had who had owned it before and maybe a little bit more story to it so that's also an interesting thing again to kind of put those labels on the back of the pieces we made or incur you know if you have something maybe adding labels to it because it kind of adds to that record it was neat at the end of the talk too she talked about a sample that she's they're trying to do research on right now and they're sort of stuck on a family it was the davis family and so she just put a call out you know if you know of a family in this particular area with these names um they'd love to f find more. So it's kind of neat too, how they were, she then in return was going to back to the genealogical society to be like, Hey, we have need some help on the sampler we're going through now. Oh, I really enjoyed that aspect too. Uh, so one person to ask a question, um, are any of these Delaware samplers uh, reproduced? And so she gave the names of two designers that have reproduced Delaware samplers. The first was Cre Queenstown sampler designs. designs. Mm -hmm. um, Barbara, what's Barbara's last name? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't. Uh, Hudson, maybe Barbara, and then the other was same. It was on this side. Barbara Hudson, right? Barbara and Barbara then, uh, samplers revisited. Mm -hmm. 
Patty Yergi. Mm -hmm. And then someone put something in the chat, which I haven't looked at yet. A sampler. Oh, okay. Another, a third company. Just making sure our time is going. <laughs> uh, I think we're okay now. So we'll have to go and take a look at those and just see what the De Delaware samplers were. And she also mentioned that really the Delaware samplers were from the last third of the 1700s. Well, really the samplers, the high point to the mid 18. So I thought that was really interesting. And then she said after that, many young girls or women started to make quilts more than samplers. And I thought that, that was too. a really interesting tidbit mm -hmm. uh, as well. So it was great. We really kind of lucked into this talk. Anna is going to be going to Philadelphia. And she had mentioned to me that she wants to go to Finkel and Daughters, Finkel and Daughter, um, which has a big textile collection. And I'm like, well, I've never heard of them. So I just went on the website and I'm like, oh, they have events. Let me look at events. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's like a webinar this, this Saturday. So we just went to it. So if anybody ever hears about other, you know, webinars or things like that, we'd love to hear about it. It's, that was really a positive thing that came out of the pandemic is how comfortable people are with Zoom and how we have all this expertise that was just maybe locally presented live, but now it's open for so many people. I mean, you do lose a little bit not being live, but just the level of, she had an excellent presentation. So right. it was Right, and because we live on the West Coast and so much of the sampler action in the United States is on the East Coast, mm -hmm. it's uh, great for us. Mm -hmm. Right, it was wonderful. It was a little early. I had to set my alarm because it's like 7 a.m. pajamas. And we're like, please no photo. Um, please no cameras. Please no camera. Luckily, webinar, you don't even have the option for that because we're in our pajamas, drinking tea. So I know, Anna, I was going to see if you wanted to come over and watch it together. I'm like, no, it's too, even too early for that. Right. right. So, okay. That's so time for our toast? Oh, it's time for our toast. Okay, I'm going to start by telling you a story. Uh, I broke up with a project. It was Spring Moon by Plum Street Samplers. And I'm going to put a photo here of what, where I was when I broke up with it. And I loved everything about this project, except I was stitching with two strands. And I thought the linen was 32, but I think it was more like 35 or 36. And it just, the process, I did not enjoy. So many episodes ago, we put it out and drew a name and that person didn't claim it for a couple of times. So we drew a new name, Stacy Lorraine, and she claimed it. And so two weeks ago, I mailed it to her and it was felt really good. I'm like, hey, it's going to a new home. I, you know, whatever she does with it, great. And then um, two weeks later, which was a couple of days ago, I got a package from her outside the door and I'm like, that is so sweet. I wonder if she is sending a little something back. Some C's candy. Some C's candy, you know, something like that. Okay, so again, this is about two weeks after I physically mailed it to her. And I opened the package and I squealed and I started crying. I'm not kidding because this is what she sent me back. Unbelievable. She finished the stitch and she made it into a project bag and she mailed it back to me. In two uh, weeks. Yeah, that, that, and then like all these little details. She has a crocheted flower. She made me a blue, I have it over with my stitching stuff, a blue, like one of those tomatoes with a straw, little strawberry on it to put your needles in. But look at this. It's perfection. I'm almost gonna cry again. Yeah, it's really, it's so thoughtful. And just kind and generous. And then it was also like, I'm like, am I living in a metaverse? Like how? Yes. I couldn't figure out for like that split second. Wait, how is it finished? Like just the timing, because even with mail, like let's say it was like two days. So it just the timing made it. So just that unexpected generosity and kindness really hit me. And so Stacy, I'm going to toast you. I'm going to toast you and your kindness and your generosity and your thoughtfulness. And I hope to be able to return that to others. Um, so thank you so much. So toasting to you. To the generosity in the cross-stitch community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's funny, I'm not a crier. I'm almost crying again. I literally screamed and started crying. So thank you. I, I already have um, a special project in here. It's my Fruits of Plenty, something I'm gonna be working on for a while. And so uh, this bag will always be in my rotation, I think. Mm -hmm. yep. It's beautiful. Wow. Okay. What are you wearing, Anna? Okay. Funny story <laughs> this morning. I was like, I think I maybe have worn everything that I've made. But then I remember I have a little mending pile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did I you mend this? I mending pile because this bias right here had come undone. 
and I mended it this morning and I ironed it. And this is a Komodo triangle dress. And it's made from Rayon from our beloved Needle Studio, which is our local one of our local fabric stores. The interesting thing about this pattern is that there are no side seams. It's cut on the bias and it's one piece, essentially. If you Wait, don't put the sleeves in. Where do you seam it? There's a seam up the back. Wow. And that's it. It's so interesting. Wow. And one interesting thing that happened to me is that I didn't realize this fabric was diagonal on the bolt. So when I put it in the bias, it lined it up and I didn't like it nearly as much as when it was on the bolt. It was just such a learning lesson for me. Wow. I really like the float and flow of garments that are cut on the bias. And I would make this again in a second. Mm -hmm. But mm. one pattern piece. I guess it says one pattern piece, three seams, because there, if you want to put the sleeves in, there's there's seams there too. And two more pattern pieces? Yeah. With the sleeves? Yeah, yeah it has okay. to be. Yeah, okay. So I guess so you can make it Anna, that's so cool. But it also maybe why before you buy your fabric, thinking about what the, like the layout, the cutout, because you might have seen from that. Wow, that's so right. cool. I didn't know that. Okay, I love that you also had to mend something. So you got something to wear. I know, we're going to be I'm like... I'm so happy to put this back in rotation. I wear this to school a lot. We're going to totally be repeating and everything. Right. Okay, so... Carolyn, this week, what are you wearing? I, for anybody that watched episode 18, this should look familiar because this is Anna's Wixton shift. And she was wearing it. She's like, oh, I don't really know. I don't wear it that much. I don't know. And I'm like, oh, let me try it on. And it's been sitting here in a pile for two weeks. And then today I'm like, I don't know what to wear today. I'm like... I'm going to put it on. So Anna recommended that, that you wear it with high-waisted pants. We'll have it on with some high-waisted pants. Looks good. And we'll do um, our catwalks. So you can okay. better see, see from it. So it's, um, Anna, let's see what you said about it. Raglan sleeve. Oh, right. Okay. It's not a raglan sleeve, Anna. It's, it's a drop sleeve. It's a drop sleeve. It's a drop sleeve. It's a raglan right. comes in diagonal. And it's just nice. And I actually really like the oversize and the pockets. I think the fabric felt a little heavy on my body, but mm. you know how I am. I don't wear scarves because I don't like yeah. to feel. I'm really, really set. That's probably why I like rayon so much because I feel like I have nothing on. Uh, so I, think I that like this, he this heavy of her. So I, I might be lobbying her. We'll see what everybody thinks, how it looks on me. I might be lobbying her to be like. Mm. Oh, it's yours already. Oh, it's, it is? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank yes. you. But if you don't think it looks great, yeah, don't, don't tell us what after you've seen the catwalk. If you don't think it looks great, just say something. You don't have to say like Carol doesn't look good, and you might say, "I think Anna should keep that." Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I wear a bigger size clothing than Carolyn, so I was worried it would look a little too big. So, but I think it has like a good oversized. Yeah, let us let me know. Does it look too big, or does it look like that sort of oversized? Mm -hmm. I even like put on a necklace. Yeah, look, it really <laughs> looks great. And like you said last in the last video, that that's sort of your style. Maybe it's more your you, style than my style. You know, too, I also like solid clothes because then I like to wear like a shawl or like a scarf or something with it. One, one time at school, they had dressed like a teacher day. And the kids that dressed like me, a lot of them, it's really funny. A lot of them just wore like solids. And then I realized... Oh, I don't. And flats. I have like, I kind of wear flats. And then a few had like some knit things on. I'm like, oh, I don't really have that many pattern things. I think after that, I went out and bought a pattern shirt. Cause I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I guess I do just wear solids. So, That's great. So. Okay. Anna, oh. Anna, okay, we're gonna start with put my drink down. Yeah, finished object, finished object. B H eighteen twenty. All right, I started a Whipco board, but I already knew the January numbers when I made my board, and so I plopped B H eighteen twenty into the two numbers because I just had such a strong urge to finish this in January. Missing samplers a lot during December, and here she is. Oh my gosh, Anna. I, there's something about the sampler. Well, I, we all know we, I love spot motif Your samplers. Name. Sure. And the ghosting in this, so there is a border all the way around the ghosting, the texture of the ghosting for me in this is beautiful. I don't feel like I can sometimes like, oh, you can't see that. I just like the look of it. And there's a lot of ghosted alphabets. There's empty space here. This is the piece that I made the big mistake on in the 24 hours of stitching. And basically when I 
finish this border, it was off. And so some of these motifs or some of the letters were too close or too far away relative to each other. But I did just a few small things and I don't think you can tell at all that something is off. Can you? Okay, let me look. On this side. Oh, no. And, no. While, and while Carolyn's looking, I want to experiment with putting my own initials or the date or something on things that I finished, which is something I've never done. I hemmed and hawed about this. I said, I'm going to try something over one. And then I looked, where am I going to put this? On oh, this it because took me a minute to find it. And I love it. Do? Okay. So I, I didn't want to take, a, I, you know, it's tempting to say like, well, you can put it here. There's an empty space. But I love that empty space. So I ended up putting it right here. And I used here Havana. Because that was a color that I was missing when I first bought the supplies for this. And I felt like the few bits of brown in this made a big difference. I really liked the brown against the light pink and the light greens. So I was wondering if it looked too heavy or too dark. I mean, I'm not going to take it out. Not at all. It has, so it has my initials and it says 2020. I like that it's a little bit hidden. Okay. And then I thought... I like well, that. My first instinct was to center it. And I thought, I don't know. So... I probably could have put it a lot of different places and it would have been fine, but I, I do like where I ended up putting that. And there we go. Can, I don't know if I congratulations, much want to say, except congratulations. for because this was two Whipco squares. Thanks. Oh, uh huh. <laughs> I started our cash jar for our retreat for the end of the year. Okay. How much are you putting in for each? I think we should item. keep it flowy, just depending on what, like the, you know, the, you know how you. Anyway, I put twenty dollars for each square, okay. and because okay. I want us to have a good old time okay. at the end of the year, <laughs> but I don't want us to feel any pressure. Okay, I think it'd be fun to just put something towards a end of the year retreat in this as we finish Whipco squares. Okay, and we'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Good. I know because at first I was thinking about ten dollars each, but then I was like, I'm like, maybe I'll do twenty dollars each. So maybe something like twenty to. But 40. if it ever okay. feels, you know, in any particular month, that feels a little bit like, yeah, well, maybe not this month, then. What well, else? Anna, so how do you feel having it finished? I feel like very peaceful. Mm. I put a, I put a post on Instagram a couple of days ago because as as you know the the empty space was going away, I was like excited and feeling sad because there's something about this piece that I connected with right away, and every time I worked on it, it just well, I don't, I don't really know what more to say, but I, I feel like, you know, maybe we're both going to cry in this episode. I know. I feel, well, thank you, Queenstown Sampler Designs. Mm -hmm. BH1820. I just wanted to show this again, just to, that was, you know, who was also mentioned to do the Delaware. Uh, that was hilarious sampler, to so. me that that was, right. So my idea is to take this to the framer soon, maybe even today and put it in to without glass into a floater frame so there'll just be a little bit of wood around mm -hmm. it whether it's a natural wood or maybe like a burn it burnish is that the right word like a, a antique silver or something like that i could see a natural or even like a like a brownish like a darker brown to pull out that color so you'll, you'll have to see what their options know. are i would love if carolyn could come with me mm -hmm. to help me look at color but we'll see yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a go. Congratulations, Anna. Thank That's you. Beautiful. I'm really happy about it. That's so beautiful. And to get it framed. Yeah, I actually pulled out um, two things to go get framed. Oh, you did? Okay. To take. So, mm -hmm. The two, my two, two Satsuma Street ones. All right. All right. Congratulations. Thanks. So now let's talk some about works in progress. Let's do it. So I'll go first. And I have been working on Winter Comes. By heartstring samplery and i'm working on the pictorial one the smaller one and for this i'm using the called for linen which was wood smoke? vintage wood smoke vintage. by lakeside linens 36 count and the call for over dyed threads and i got this as a kit from acorns and threads when we were visiting them so here is are the threads They're so pretty. Mm -hmm. And here is, let me first put a picture of where I was yeah, last you've time. Done a lot. I actually was surprised. I've, I've done a lot. And this is where I am now. Oh my heavens. Come on. I know. That is so pretty. I, I know. I love it. So I've worked around the border and I'm almost done with the house. I have a little bit more for the house and some of the candles. And then sort of a, these are halfway point. So I have about the same amount. So maybe about half, maybe about halfway done. And I continue to love that border. 
And this is so fun to stitch on because it's a combination of all that detail in the border and then lots of fill in with the snow and the house was a lot of fill in. And then there's going to be more snow and animals over on this side as well. <laughs> I know. Bring on and the animals. Smoke. And there is something about this fabric. I would never, never have picked this color fabric. I don't even know how to describe it. It's gray. It's almost gray, like a purple, brown. like a bluey, browny gray. It's perfect. It is perfect. And you're going to have extra. You can do something else with it. I know. And it has such a wintery vibe. All of the colors look great on it. I love how the white, I mean, look how that white really pops. I so know. you really see those snowflakes. So just really enjoying this. And I'm going to keep stitching on it um, probably through February while it okay. still feels wintery. And I wouldn't be surprised if I finish it, but if I don't, I will put it away and definitely finish it when it gets to be winter again. Yeah, I think so, unless something unexpected happens, I bet you'll finish it. Mm -hmm. So that's Winter Comes by Heartstring Sampling. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, and I should say, I'm showing my bags. This is in Bag by Overtotes. And Anna, what, what were these little charms? She got a couple of these zipper pulls. And you, pick, I have the tree, the car oh, with yeah, the tree. Do you remember who did them? Uh, oh, it's like a big company, like something, something. Okay, but they're just, it's just fun having that zipper pull. All right, Anna, what are you working yeah. on? Okay, this is just, I've just worked a little bit on some Christmas trees. Whenever I have an evening where I'm like, I just want to do a little block stitching. I just want to do some not you know extra relaxing stitching so this is called the number 570 christmas tree set by nikki pattern on etsy and i am doing my first tree on just a little scrap of cloister cream which is legacy linen and the top of that tree and i don't know cute yeah it's just cute it's fun do you have uh, a vision of what you want to do with it? I'll probably just make it a little ornament of some sort. Mm -hmm. I I, uh, I don't have like strong feel feelings about it uh, compared to my sample. It just it's just uh, relaxing, and I think mm -hmm. the colors are interesting. And mm -hmm. I'm just messing around. That's great. I, th I think it's important just to mess around with things too. It's right. like the process. I think I actually want to try these brighter colors on a little bit of. I I I love cloister cream, but I'm want, I wonder how these would look on a darker fabric. Mm. So mm -hmm. I might do a second tree on a mm -hmm. darker. Would um, you ever try one on red? Sure. Or do you think that'd be too? Well, we could just hold up our. I it's could, all DMC. Mm -hmm. I could see um, making little bean bags. <laughs> yeah. And then having them, and they could be good little kid bean bags or. Little trees. Okay, keep that in mind. <laughs> or making like a little banner. Oh. With those. So, maybe. So yeah. my, maybe like do it and sew it on some paper garland or something. Mm -hmm. I'm liking that idea a little better. Okay. But you need to do six, all six of them to, to do that. Or maybe three. Yeah, maybe three. Let's see. Or this might be the only one. <laughs> It's just one of those, uh -huh. I don't know, it's like a turn to, I've worked on it just maybe, I don't know, two or three nights when I'm very tired and that kind of thing. Okay. Great. Martha Good. Evans. Martha Evans. All right. So we, Martha Evans, 1879 by the Scarlet House. And we are stitching this in celebration of Brenda and her 60th birthday. And we both... Started stitching it on her birthday, which was Monday, January 16th for that. I know. It's so. so funny. I was kind of like, whatever, whatever. And then I think there is, I have a piece of me, something about someone's actual birthday mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. feels important. Mm -hmm. It is you. important. Mm -hmm. So I got a very strong urge in the end to start it on Brenda's birthday. Mm -hmm. So we were just sharing um, our floss. So I went up and I got, this is all the Swatage. And then Anna <laughs> came, came over, over here. Like picking off some pieces for her, so I have I have the master stash and she has the auxiliary stash exactly. for that. And neither of us, the whole sampler is beautiful, but neither of us is stitching the whole thing. So we picked out um, design elements or motifs that we liked, and then took our charts and copied them and cut and paste and sort of made our own little collage of what they it was are. fun. It was, it was really really fun. So we have our taped together um, pieces. So Anna, you want to talk about which one we're, you're focusing on here? Sure. So 
I knew I wanted to do the bunny. And it's funny, it wasn't until after I cut these out that I realized that the bunnies are different and the different flowers are different in, in very slight ways. But I have a bunny, I have this flower, and then I have one of these flowers, and they're all within this cartouche. And the boughs sort of break the cartouche in a few places. Mm -hmm. So, and I turned the, I turned the, that the, one. Both of them upside down. Oh, you turn both the of them upside, upside down. down. Anyway, mm -hmm. let me show let me show you what mm -hmm. I have so far. This is what it ends up looking like, and because this pussy willow is much lighter in terms of being more airy, and it had a lot of white in it, I have changed some of the white to some darker colors that are going to be in the second stem on the other side of the bunny. So there'll be another arch right here. I don't know. It's like a bunny hiding in a fort or something. Yeah. <laughs> And then within the cartouche of it. I think I actually will look really good inside the cartouche because it has those colored kind of flags around it also. So much fun. So much fun. This is what I did the worked on the first day of our 24 mm -hmm. hours. So I started on Brenda's birthday and then finished the bunny and did that mm -hmm. flower. And, and what linen are you using? Oh, yes. What am I using? I'm using 36 count prairie grass. By that's right. Them. That's right. That's right. Looks really good. Yes, it's really good. I'm liking it a lot. Okay, then for me, I was really drawn to this berry bowl, and I loved these flowers. Anna's doing this one, and I'm doing both, so I like that. I also loved these tall vases of flowers, so I'm doing... You might have to say vase. Vase. I'm doing this, and then I brought one of these up along here, and then I'm going to put some the border on two sides, and then this more geometric border will go all the way across and to fill in I have a couple little of the motifs are scattered around that are going to fill in. I really want to hold up our collage but I do feel like then we're holding up the chart even though it's a chopped up chart. Yeah. I have mixed feelings I'm just going to like show it so it's like looks something kind of like that. Okay. <laughs> You'll just have to wait and see uh, when it's done. So I stitched the berry bowl with the birds and one of the flowers and you can see I've started the border and then it's gonna come up this side and my pot of flowers will go, oh, my pot of flowers will actually go here. So this border will stop at the base of the pot of flowers, but the border across the top will go across everything. One of my favorite things about your, the way you've put this design together is the elongated rectangleness of yeah. it. It is gonna be an elongated oh. rectangle. Um, I stitched the berry bowl first. That was my first berry bowl. She loved it. She was uh, talking about berry bowls for several days. Oh, you want to do the berry bowl? Want to do the berry bowl sample? Which and I, I do. I wanted to for a long time. She had gotten for a long time. I've been stitching for two years. Yeah, she had gotten in. She's like, you want to do the berry bowl? I'm like, oh, maybe. And I'm like, yes. You know what? This berry bowl sampler. I mean, the berry bowl reminded me of like candy, like M and M's. Like these little <laughs> berries were so fun. It was the right size, like it was enough time with a particular color. It's easy to put your ends under and everything it wasn't just like a little stitch. I think some people don't like them because of all the times you have to change your color. I love that. I yeah. did, first I did all the berries and then I filled in my background. I don't know if there's a, a one way to do it better than the other. And then on the border, all of the flowers down here are white with a red top and because I have a lot of border for not as much design. I'm mean, gonna yeah. have all of my flowers have the red top, but inside where it's always white here, I think I'm gonna use different colors for that. And I'm gonna wait until I have everything else in it and use that Just as a way to kind of balance. Where. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's gonna work mm -hmm. great, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm stitching this on uh, 36 count Tephra by Cedar River Linen. Cedar River Linen. Cedar River Linen. Yeah, and really, it's funny, um, I hadn't realized it has a little bit of like a, touch of like orange or red in it and you particularly see it when it's out in the sun but I'm really happy with how that's looking yes looking great and it's been so fun I have so enjoyed watching everybody work on those and you know seeing some people are doing of course MPI some people are using DMC we're using Swatage and some people are using 103 and I actually feel like I can see like a I slight think... change in some of the colors because of course the same exact color um, and so you're it's been really fun for me watching. I agree because it's rare when you see so many examples of the same thing in such a short, mm -hmm. in a sort of condensed time because mm -hmm. of Brenda's birthday. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. That's really fun. Great. Okay. Oh, next. 
Right, the next thing I'm working on and um, is this is for my WIPCO. So my WIPCO number 10 for this month was start and finish a Christmas small, which cracked us up because it was right after Christmas. <laughs> I know. And then you know what's so funny is uh, our, for the next WIPCO, one of the numbers picked for the next WIPCO for me was uh, finish seasons of a heart winter. And my, I have a Christmas one on my neck. And you have a Christmas. Okay. So th that works perfectly for me. So I picked um, to work on go Goy, Joy and Good Cheer by Brenda Gervais. And for this, I had purchased Katie Strachan's Silk Conversion, and it came with the linen, the back fabric, um, her, her, her the silks, and it's a combination of 103 and Gobelin. I, this is hard to do. You can kind of Getting see. Get better at it. And I'm having so much fun with these silks. I'm using them in different projects. I really feel like I'm starting to build up a good stash um, of the silks. I just want to pull out one thing. So here's my progress. You want me to hold that while you pull the other sure. thing out? Mm -hmm. And I'm getting pretty close. I'm, I will definitely be able to finish this in the month of January for that. And really what I have primarily left is the Cardinal in his greenery is going to go here. Oh, and there are a couple of trees, smaller trees over here that I'm still deciding where I'm going to put them in. I'm going to wait till it's done uh, for that. And the snowman, it's so oh, cute. Oh, yes, those little The snowman has, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> the snowman has a tiny one-stitch orange carrot nose. And Katie in her kit sent us one it's piece. Great. And I even so I, I put the leftover thread in there because I'm like, I just love the fact that I got one strand of thread. It was perfect on this beautiful floss drop. Now, what Katie did too is there are several places on the design in the greenery where it's just a one stitch, little red one stitch berry for that. And she gave us beads. So those one stitches, I've already done the ones that are four stitch berries, but there'll be a few places along there that was just a one stitch. So you, I'm a bead virgin. <laughs> I'm going to do beads for the first time for this. And what you do is you finish your piece, you block it, you put your fusible interface on, uh, yes. and then you sew your beads on. So it has some. Mm -hmm. in the back and it's like, the, it's like the last piece you're doing. It looks fantastic. Oh boy. Yeah. Those colors. I know. That blue I cannot get enough of I love it it's so fresh so vibrant in fact I must be so excited every time I have to pop my top I pop my top off <laughs> so I'm gonna maybe just glue it on just so I know which number it is and so I can use the bottom part but I'm like oh That's I can so use funny. the blue for that I also find something about the silks and she uses legacy linens which is a little bit I think it's like a 37 or a 38 so it's just a little bit tighter yes. I usually use at this point 36 I feel so zen when I'm stitching it because you can't go fast with silk. I find too, it's a little slippery. So you have to kind of be very intentional with your stitches ah. to get a play. And so I always feel very zen when I'm working on this project. I'm just like, ah, mm -hmm. so, I love it. And you think it's because of the silk and the tighter linen? I do. I do. There's something, I don't know, something about the stitching of that. I'm just finding I'm using my hands a little bit differently to Especially the Goblin. The Goblin is a little bit slippery, but I love the effect of it. And you sort of, like I put it and then I'm kind of holding, the, I'm not quite sure Tension what I'm it. doing it, but I'm, I'm finding my hands are naturally kind of tensioning it along the way. Katie taught me that word. What? Tensioning. Tensioning. <laughs> I hope it's the right word. <laughs> and, and she's such a master too of color and really thinking about the fabric as of design. Of course, because it is, right? It's your ground. She calls it the ground. So I also feel like, like, especially with winter comes too, with that really unusual color linen, like really starting to trying to think more and more about how does the, the ground, how does the linen affect the colors and affect For me, I know that that part of cross stitching is going to take me years and mm -hmm. just trying lots of mm -hmm. things. I mean, there's a similar thing in quilting where you mm -hmm. think colors are going to look a certain way together and you start sewing mm -hmm. them together and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. a little different than what I thought. And I think with any kind of handcraft, you don't know, you have to try it. Like Absolutely. People can tell you as much as they want, but you've got to do it yourself and train your eye um, to see it. So, so that's joy and good cheer. So we got a little knitting. Got a little knitting. I haven't seen this. I can't wait. Um, so I've been st uh, working on a sweater. It's called the Lunenberg. I know. Pullover. And I'll put a little picture. This is where I was. I didn't show it last episode. This has been two episodes ago. And I am just... Plowing along. So I finished my yoke. So pretty. Those colors. I know. I oh my you know what? It really reminds me of our sister Joan. Mm. The color, especially yeah. that, that mustard color. Yeah. So I've got my yoke done. 
and I've split. Look great with your hair. <laughs> I've split for my body and then the sleeves, you come back and you do your sleeves later. And so at this point, I am just knitting around. Any knitter, you know what I mean? I'm just knitting around and around and around and around and around. And around. So that's awesome. Like watching TV or we were in the car yesterday, in the car. It's it's just a great mindless um, knitting. So it's kind of fun. Like I love the color work in like in cross stitch where you follow a chart. Um, when you're knitting something like this, the same thing, you have a very similar looking chart and it's just telling you what color each stitch needs to be around the way. So you have to kind of be a little bit more um, thinking when you're, when you're doing that part. And this yarn I'm using, it's a Canadian yarn and it's, the company is called Lichen and Lace. Oh my gosh, beautiful. I know, little I know they sell that. So and it's their Rustic Heather Sport and it's just 100% wool and um, using a variety of colors for that. I'm going to be going to the East Coast in about three weeks. I'd love to have this finished. Look at that. I don't know quite if I'll have it finished. Otherwise, I'll, I'll we'll take it with me and I'll try to finish it there. So, okay. We'll see what because it's perfect. It's going to be a little bit of a heavier sweater, so it will be good. Definitely. For that climate. Feels woolly. Feels woolly. Okay. So those are our works. Oh, your progress. hexagons. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, We're Curious. And... I, and maybe you have too, and every, maybe you all have seen it as well, so many cross-stitchers also quilt. And I have seen several people working on English paper pieced grandmother garden quilts. And for those of you that don't know, I recommend go look at Nicole's needlework. She has just finished her piecing one. And then Chris of the Camping Stitcher. Those are two that I thought of right away that have, have done this. And what you do for the paper piecing is you take hexagons and you base them on a piece of paper and then use that to sew it together. So that was really curious to me. And then I've just been thinking a lot about samplers and the role of samplers and thinking how can we also, it's fun like stitching reproduction samplers, but then how can you also maybe make a sampler more your own? Whether it's like how we're doing with Martha Evans, we're taking a sampler and taking out motifs we want. And so I started thinking, well, how could I maybe use those hexagons and in each hexagon have some type of little motif? And so it's almost like a hexagon sampler and sew them together. So a sampling of from samplers. A sampler of samplers. So I don't know what I'm going to make at this point. I'm just playing. I woke up one morning, just as a mathematician, I love doing things with compass and a straight edge. I'm like, oh, let me let me construct my, hex so let me right construct my hexagon. Yes. And I was playing with my size. And I just kind of woke up one morning and I was just like all in and went for it. Did you cut it out with an X-Acto knife? Or what? No, I just cut it out with scissors because oh. I wanted to have like a window. I was trying to think about which size I wanted. And I went with a size that it's two inches on a side all the way around. And I've done two so far. So this is the first one. I did, and I actually already have it basted on paper. And what Is I'm hard tuck the ends under like that. Not in? at all. In okay. fact, I paper. I just finger pressed it, and it was almost easier than fabric. Probably, that yeah. was really easy. And. Hmm. Maybe I held a little bit better than fabric. Like really that. finding this is a great resource, the Ultimate Sampler Motif Sourcebook by Brenda Keys. That's what I used for my letters and numbers for. Oh, uh huh. For doing that, mm -hmm. and so this was just one of the motifs, and I just went into my stash of overdyed cottons and just pulled some colors I liked for that. And then I thought, oh, let me do one that's an alphabet. So I have one, and this is just part of the alphabet. It goes from A to Q. They look a little smaller and more dainty in person than they did on Instagram to my okay. eye. Yeah. And then when I finished this, I was going to center this, but I'm like, I think there's too much space. So I added just three variations of stars and a little border across this. And this just came from my silk collection. I just picked this. And these two blues are different. Again, I wanted to experiment with two similar looking blues, but you can see this one's much more vibrant. Now, do you that. think you're going to finish the alphabet mm -hmm. on another hexagon mm -hmm. in another way? Okay. Yep. For that. And then I thought, what are other good sources? And I thought, well, just like, you can look at any sampler you want and pull out a motif. So I'm in the process of stitching Oh Joyous Day and I love the bird from Oh Joyous Day. So this is my third hexagon. Oh, I love that I'm just I'm just working on the bird um, along the way. Let's just see how it's gonna look in the hexagon. Yeah, here, let me pull out. Okay, so then once I knew what hexagon, I went to um, paper pieces and you can order pre-cut hexagons, so I got two inch hexagons and then half hexagons for that. And then oh. this is called a fussy cutter. So it's a fancy version of my window. So That's it's just a little heavier. Yeah. 
and then this so then as i'm stitching oh yeah that, that's you know nice i can i can play around with what it's going to be and for this one the bird's tail i am going to have to shorten just a little bit so you can kind of play with it along the way mm -hmm. so now every time i'm looking at a sample i'm like oh that could be a hexagon or just thinking what might go on the hexagon so i think i'm going to uh, make about four or five hexagons and then so like play around with them and sew them together and then see how that yeah. aspect of it goes oh so but i'm thinking like different linens so i've used three different linens i'm using different threads like really thinking of it as a sample mm -hmm. so, and if it's something i end up enjoying i think what i'll do is i'll cut then a f you know these little rectangles of a few of our and i'm just using our scrap linens things left over but kind of have a, my pile of that because every time i'm like going in picking my linen and cutting it the cut so i like that idea so get things going Sometimes just those first steps too, just like, wait, just waiting for you. So, so fun. And each of these is like a mini finish. Mm. And this was so fun because I was like, once I did the alphabet, okay, what can I add? Oh, I want to get to another star. Where can I find a star? So I love it. And if you have any other ideas of what things I could put on hexagons, um, pop it in the comments. I'd love to, love to hear. Or if you want more information, um, it's super easy and fun to do. And I'm even looking at. I think you have us all convinced to do it. And I'm going through samplers now, and I'm like, oh, that'd be good on a hexagon, or oh, I could mix those two things. Um, yeah, we together. should just we should go through all of our charts one day and just yeah, get some sticky notes and because I there's so many beautiful samplers with so many beautiful motifs, and I just know I can't stitch all of them. It's just mm -hmm. impossible. So how can I ex have a little experience with some, or, in, or you might enjoy love or appreciate so much that you want to do it twice? I know I haven't done them twice. <laughs> I haven't gotten to this part in the sampler, but I'm like, oh, but I want to do them so badly. I'm just going to put them on this little hexagon. Mm -hmm. All right, so stay, I'm just playing hexagon exploration. Curious. You are curious. Hashtag sabbatical. <laughs> Actually, all joking aside, just having that luxury, it's not so, e it's, you know, time, right? Hey, Coco, quiet. But it's also like my head space is freed up. Like I, yes, I, I, that, I am still thinking a little bit about teaching in the background, like thinking about what I want to do next fall or different things. But for the most part, I have all this creative space that I would have been putting toward work. All of a sudden I'm like, oh, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Right. It's very, very fun mm -hmm. to be along for the ride. Yeah. Good. All right. Two uh, supplies? Shared supplies. So just two small things. First of all, I just want to show everybody uh, um, I like to use wool rope, <laughs> and oh, I, wow. I use it to stuff children's stuffed animals. Maybe I'll put a picture of one of the children's stuffed animals oh, yeah, I made so right here. They're so cute. I'll, I'll put, link the designer too. But when you get a pound, it feels really big, but you'd be surprised you go through it. So I have a new pound. And this I got, I can't remember, my first pound I got like probably four, three, three or four years ago. This one I got from Living Dreams Yarn. But if you just search for wool roving stuffing, it comes up a lot um, in Etsy. And it's not very expensive. So use that. You can use that for pillows, stuffed animals, anytime you, place where you use fiber fill, you can use the wool roving as well. And then the other thing I bought is uh, Carol Saltbuck Stitcher is stitching uh, Jane Atkinson. And it's, this is a chart by the Scarlet Letter. And I cannot get enough of the border. And hers, every time she puts it up, I'm like, ah, that's so beautiful. So what I'm gonna do with this project is I'm gonna stitch the border as the pattern goes, but inside, and there's actually a very thin black outline. So inside, what I'm gonna do here is make it a, uh, a genealogy sampler inside. So my husband has this really strong belief that all women need to trace back their mother's mother, 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 as far as you can through your matriarchal line. And he really wishes we, the women, kept that mother's name with them and passed it down, just like we have our father's 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 father name, at least in the, for um, our culture, how we, how we do names. Uh, and so my mom was able to go back. She went back uh, three gen. So her she could go back to her great grandmother. And so we were using right. So her mother, grandmother, great grandmother, and her last name was Kroll. So for a while, we've been calling ourselves the Kroll women. But then my husband got my mom to do her DNA, and he has traced back ten generations. 
of mothers, mothers, mothers. And he goes back to um, a woman who was born in 1730. And so he's even given me the spreadsheet that has everybody's names and their birth date and their death date if they've died, where they're born, and then also where they're buried. And everybody until our generation was born in that Pennsylvania Dutch area. So really surprising, very concentrated where they were from 1730. And I think he said the generation, the next generation down, they were the ones that came from Germany. Mm. So he says, I think I could trace them back a little bit, but it started to get harder. So I'm gonna take this inside and do our matriarchal line. And I'm gonna go, go back, I'm gonna start with that woman. And it's interesting, her name's Anna. Anna Margaretha Jansen Lalbach. And I'm gonna put both their maiden name and their married name there. And it's fun, like we have a sister, Susan, and I don't think my, well, of course my mom didn't know that, but we have a Susanna back there. And actually Susan's middle name is Elizabeth. And I thought that had no family connection, but there are two Elizabeths in our line. Again, my mom wouldn't have known, known this. And um, several Catherines. And there's a Carol, Caroline, Carolina. 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 Mm-hmm. That's a middle name, but mm -hmm. yeah. So, so really fun. So I'm gonna start back with Anna Margaretha Jansen and come down. And then when you get to me, I'm a leaf because I have only sons, I don't have any daughters, but I'm gonna, once I get to my mom, I'm gonna put the five sisters. And then for my sisters like Anna who have daughters and some of those daughters have daughters themselves, I'm gonna keep that going as well. So I'm gonna start horizontal. And then when I get to mom, I'll start going a little bit more vertical. Mm -hmm. And I uh, I wanted to order the chart because I wanted to get the sizing inside. And I think there's going to be plenty of space inside um, to chart, start charting that out. And you'll, you'll have lots of time to do that because that is a border. <laughs> okay, I know, this is, I know this is a huge project. One of our commenters um, reminded me, Jacob, I think it might have been like episode five, um, interviewed Amir who's a young stitcher in New York City, and she loves to stitch on tiny, tiny, tiny fabric, tiny, tiny stitches, but sh they were talking about this idea of having a, a, a never finished piece. You're always working on it. So for this, I have no, I just wanna get going and start that genealogy, and it's gonna take me a long time. That's a great to image to hold on to. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like your forever piece, and, mm -hmm. and there might be more girls born while I'm working on it. Like you never know. Right. Um, I love Carol Saltbox Stitcher. Her fabric that she uses, it was lentil by Lakeside Linens. And she used the call for a Verisois. So Carol, I'm <laughs> copying you. So I've actually ordered the linen and it takes a fat half. It's that big. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and once I get going, so I'm going to start charting this as well. So I'm sure it supplies. Great. And if you want, we can, we can pass it back and forth and I can stitch a little bit. You can stitch a little bit. <laughs> Go back and forth. Okay, here we are. Where are our thumbs, thumbs up? up? Why don't you go first? Okay. First thumbs up, the library. Mm. So I've heard this book referenced a few times. This uh, Girl at Embroidery by Betty Lynn. And this is volume one. So I looked at our library. It didn't carry it, but we have something called Link Plus. And I don't, I don't know if that's how widely that is used, but there were a couple copies in Berkeley and a couple copies at Occidental College. And within a week I had, it's a two volume set, but I mistakenly only ordered one volume. I didn't see, see that I needed to do. Did you order the volume. first or the second? So we have the first volume. Okay. Here. And it's great. It automatically renews. So. Oh, it does? Yeah. For one time, you have plenty of time and the second volume is coming. Good. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. but I think I, we can get a book from anywhere in California. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Second thing, coasters. I like a good coaster. Mm -hmm. I have some wood furniture in my home made by family members, and I get a little teasing from my nieces of how much I use coasters. <laughs> but I got some new coasters for Christmas, and I'm just like... I don't know. I like a good coaster. I really do. And I think I like the stone. stone uh -huh. Oh, too. the stoneware is really good because it absorbs. It's so funny, Anna, because when I was stitching over at your house for the marathon, I'm like, oh, I really like these coasters. And I, I hadn't really remembered seeing them before. So yeah, no. Santa. Mm -hmm. And the third thing I have on my list this time is details in packaging. Mm. So I've been collecting some yarn to make my daughter a cowl. And one of the companies that sent yarn 
the skeins of yarn were wrapped in tissue and it had this little flax thread with a tiny little metal hexagon. Oh, that's on a it. stitch marker. Oh, see, yeah. I don't know enough about knitting mm -hmm. to have recognized that. That's really I nice. I thought that there was something about it that was so understated and pretty. You can make it a bracelet. That, well, I was going to put it on a um, project bag zipper. You could, yeah, okay, you could put it on a project bag zipper. Mm -hmm. But I do appreciate. I don't know, a little wax bag with a little fold and a seal. When there's attention and detail to packaging, I think mm -hmm. I, I held up the Hillside Rookery's, mm -hmm. Olivia's mm -hmm. packaging mm -hmm. and the packaging for the linen. The mm -hmm. it, it, it makes such a difference. I know some people think, oh, it's just a waste of resources or something. To me, it's important. Shows, it's important. Or so, it shows that little extra bit of like care or detail for that. Nice. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan. Carolyn, okay. your thumbs up. All right, my thumbs up are all related to activity and sports. So thing number one is part of what I wanted to do with sabbatical. Last fall, I was so busy. I wasn't really exercising. So we rejoined the Y. We had lapsed our Y with COVID, but we rejoined it. I am back in there. It feels great. I love doing the elliptical. And now you know what I'm doing is I'm bringing floss tube. So I'll bring, I, mean, I love this so much. I usually like listen to music or something, but I'll put a floss tube on with my iPad. And that's great because sometimes you're just listening and you don't have to give, you know, you're just listening, you don't have to look. And then when they show something, you can like get in there. So I have been able to stay on the elliptical far longer than I had before. Thank because, you, floss tube. Thank you, floss tube. So I'm looking for like longer floss tubes. I'm like, oh, okay, 30 minutes. That's not quite long enough. So that's been really a thumbs up to that. I'm really, it feels really good to be exercising again. The other thing is I'm all into football and our 49ers right now are doing great. They won their first playoff game last weekend. Or maybe it was even their second one. It was a nail biter. It's really exciting tomorrow. So by the time we actually release this, this game will have already happened. But tomorrow they play the Philadelphia Eagles really nervous um but just really exciting so go go niners for that and then my third thumbs up is do you ever like when the the jackpot gets really big you buy a lottery ticket i don't know like if occasionally it gets, okay so occasionally but the thing is whenever i buy a lottery ticket this is this is a sidebar is i always make myself buy one two three four five six because the probability of that winning is as high as anything else. And I'm always like, well, that's never gonna win. So that just reminds me that I'm probably never gonna win. Mm -hmm. So I'll buy a one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'll buy a random one. But don't you have like- um, You're saying those are the numbers you choose. Those are the numbers one, I two, choose. Three, mm -hmm. do, uh, but doesn't everybody fantasize, okay, if you win, what would you do? You know what I mean? Like I'd be Definitely. like, I'm like, I'd pay off everybody's mortgage that I could or whatever. One of my things for the lottery is I, my husband and I are so into women's soccer. We follow the national team. Um, we go to Stanford and watch the women play there. We love soccer. And I'm always like, we have a great soccer stadium right outside San Jose where the men, we have a men's team. And I'm like, if I win the lottery, I'm bringing a women's team to San Jose and then I'm going to get season tickets, but I'm going to bring that team. Guess what? There's a team that's going to come to San Jose. <laughs> It's like, I felt like, it's like I won the lottery because that's what I would do. So Santa Clara is a huge soccer, women's soccer. And there are many, many, many wonderful U.S. women's players that have played over the years that came from Santa Clara. And they came together and are funding the team. The so so it's women who graduated from Santa, Santa Clara, Clara University mm -hmm. are using their... And many of them have gone on. They're announcers now. They've played on the national team. They're very famous and they are the ones that have pulled together the, cool. the, the business deal to do this. So mm -hmm. I've already told my husband, I'm like, the minute season tickets go on, I have never owned a seat, gotten a season ticket, I'm getting a season ticket. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I won the lottery. When he told me that, I'm like, I won the lottery. I won the lottery. That's one of my lottery dreams. So thumbs up. Okay, sorry. That was probably far more than you were interested in, but you can tell. Sometimes when we're excited about oh. things, we can, you know, we're, you're allowed to go on. Back okay, a bit. thank you. Yes. Okay. So if anybody out there likes women's soccer, it better be a good team name because I'm going to get one some swag. <laughs> good colors, good name. Yeah. Speaking of swag. Yeah. I, I, I thought of like a hat or something. Yeah. Somebody posted this on Instagram. Vans has a white ball cap that has cross stitch printed cross stitch flowers on it. I think I think I Go need order to, it. I think I need to get it. it. Yeah. It, it is calling to me big time. Yeah. You could even then stitch over it with thread. No, I'm going to keep it just as it okay. is. You can do that. All right. Okay. Until next time. Happy crafting. And stay curious. All right. Bye. Bye.
we go.